Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. There's another paid request, this time for Glare Mode. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for The Primevals, a 2023 film that... The backstory on this is a lot more interesting than the movie. The movie, it's a full moon film that has some fun stop motion animation, and I'm a sucker for that type of technique. Um, there's a bit in the beginning, and there's a good chunk in the third act. That is really the only thing worthwhile in seeing in this film. But like I said, the backstory I found much more intriguing. Because what happened was there was a guy named David Allen who was a special effects guy. Sally passed away in 1999. He did effects for young Sherlock Holmes that was nominated for an Oscar. He did effects for Honey and Shrunk the Kids. Flesh, not Flash, Flesh Gordon, uh, Batteries Down Included. So he did a lot of effects throughout the years. And back in like the 60s, he had this idea to do this type of film that couldn't get a whole lot of funding at one point maybe hammer hammer horror film you know hammer that company was going to do it and then it didn't work out then there was another project something involved in pterodactyls but that didn't work out so then in the late 70s to early 80s Charles Band came into the picture and said, hey, yeah, let's let's do this film. There's even a magazine from Cine Fantastique, 1978, on the cover, pre-production, The Primevals, this film. But it never escaped pre-production, whether because they ran out of funding or, or what the whole deal was. I mean, we got into the 80s, Empire Pictures was a thing, then that kind of went belly up, and then you have Full Moon, which we're not going to have the biggest budget. Until ultimately, I think around 1994, the live action, sh the live action stuff was shot in 1994. Now, I don't know if none of the stop motion animation was done at the time, or some. If so, I don't know which parts were done and which were not. And the idea, that was 1994. If you film that, I guess throughout the next couple years, like he would, be, would he work on the stop motion? Like by himself? I didn't know how much of it was done. I don't know. But yeah, was that a finished film? 1999, the guy passes away. And I guess many, many years later. I don't know who had, I don't know who had the idea, if it was Charles Band or someone else said, "Hey, let's try to finish this film for for David." Granted, it's been I don't know twenty some years since he died, but at least by the time this, but okay, sure, why not? So I guess I think there was like a Indiegogo or something like Tidstar Indiegogo, and. They, they raised some money. They got some of David's friends, colleagues who know effects, to work on it. And it made me go, where the hell were all you people at when he was alive and you could have just done the film? But, I mean, maybe don't do you know, three other Puppet Master movies and you could have put the money into finishing. But, I mean, it did finally get released. Cool looking poster. The plot of the film is we're in the Himalayas and there's this Yeti. Dazi looks like from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer type of thing if it was less white and more. Uh, I mean, a, a less. A, a much less white, abominable. You know, it just looks like a Rudolph Red-Nosed Reindeer. I'll just say that. 
but they're trying to capture it because they don't want to kill it but things go wrong someone dies and the yeti gets buried in the snow and killed sometime later that body is sent to this university where this professor she shows to the world that the yeti exists granted in real life people are going huh, who made that Stan Winston Nah, I don't know it was that that good you know that's what someone else would think in reality but in the movies like there's no way you could say it's anything other than it's a yeti and apparently there was this guy named Matthew so great stole my name who had written a thesis on the Yeti and he was kind of pushed aside and looked at as crazy but he's been invited back to go hey I'm the professor I know we said you were wrong we didn't like how you were doing things at the time but not only do we have this and it's proven that it's real we wanted to do an expedition to Nepal so me the professor and you the both of us we don't go to Nepal and we don't there's a female student there and there's a local guide and we'll see where these yetis are coming from which is what they do N E P A L Viva Nepal Viva Nepal so they go to Nepal and as soon as they get there they get mud and the professor she steered the lead guy, Matthew, doesn't do anything. And they flee this other guy. Rondo Montana helps them. What I mean, I'm kind of jealous. I will I'm like, what a name. Rondo Montana. That's actually not a bad name to have. What's your name? Rondo Montana. Oh shit. And to be honest. He kind of seemed like a low-budget Bo Svensson. I know you're saying, well, isn't Bo Svensson a low-budget Bo Svensson? Well, this is even lower. The acting in this is not good. The characters, to say they're one-dimensional would be putting it lightly. The plot, the story is nothing that's going to make you go wow it's still a very cheap full moon production now because it was made in the 90s and then they released till 2023 maybe that kind of cheap production will remind you of watching those type of movies back in the day of full moon which I like some of them you know I like some of the puppet masters I like the first three trancers movies I like doll man so, you know, I like a couple of them. But, I mean, they had people like Tim Thomerson. Or, I mean, in the Puppet Masters. I don't know. It, they just seem a bit more fun than this. At least the first couple of them. Like, like two, two, three, four, and five. I remember not minding the Puppet master, But, anyway... Here, I said the acting, it's, it's not really that good of a film, and you kind of sit in there, Sally, going, man, I feel bad for this David Allen guy, because it wasn't worth it at the end of the day. I hate saying that, because th this is obviously a passion project, and he was working on it in 1994, and he wanted it finished, and... Hey, good on, you know, Charles Band and them getting the financing and getting the people together to finish what this guy, David Allen, started. So I commend the commitment. I commend the thought. I commend the... The notion. But, you know, I'm sitting there going, it really wasn't worth it because this film came out in 2023 do you hear people talking about the prime evils i'm sure most people are going what the hell are you talking about i never even heard of the film in the first place <laughs> exactly so like david allen think about 
I know this is going to sound mean and cynical, but just bear with me. David Allen had this idea since the 60s, 70s, 80s, filming in the 90s. The guy dies, not even having his dream project finished. And then you look at the footage and you're like, this is like any generic 90s like sci-fi channel flick or like in terms of the acting, the production quality. Or they didn't those some of those much lesser 90s full moon films. And that's the thing is that the stop motion stuff, you see a bit of the beginning with the Yeti. But you don't see really any other stop motion till like an hour into the film. You see like another bit with another Yeti who just pretty much just walks away. But you know, even if you're going into this for that stuff, that stuff, other than the beginning, you don't see till like an hour into the movie. And you don't really have a story for the characters. They said the acting is bad. So, for that, again, other than the some fun stop motion in the opening, for the good chunk of the two-thirds of the movie, I don't know what you'd be enjoying, to be honest. Again, there's nothing to the characters. The closest the attempt is Rondo Montana used to be a hunter, and he kind of quit doing that because, as he puts it, the eyes of a dying giraffe can change a man. Which, I didn't mean to laugh, but it, that, that line did make me laugh for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's just... You think of hunting a lion or a tiger that was a giraffe. Granted, I could see where, you know, because they're harmless. And some dick wanted his giraffe archway and the guy so maybe like the notion I can understand being serious maybe it's just the, the way it was, the line was delivered I don't know but okay there's a little bit with him and then the local guide his brother's the one who died at the beginning of the film and so he has a bit of something on a chip on his shoulders and it seems like there's a bit of animosity between him and Rhonda Montana. But then that gets resolved almost off stream because at one minute, the one guy's pissed at the guy going, you saw that Yeti and you trying to fire and shoot at him. You could put us in danger. What are you doing, man? Then they don't talk for a while, those two. Then the next time they talk, they're, they're very friendly with each other. I'm like, are you know? Are are you not going to like properly build that up in any way? Apparently not. And really, it's like again, our characters they go find the female student, they go find the guide, they go into the snow, they fall into a cave, they find the the lost world pretty much with all forests and stuff and. Not so much the cold Himalayas. This is very warm and stuff. They look around. They find prehistoric men. With you know, a bit of like. Not quite Planet Apes. Type of makeup. <clears throat> then they talk some more. They see a cave. They go into it. They see a, like a UFO. They go in. They see an alien. Which is done practically, granted moving a bit stiffly. Kind of like the, I don't know, the Hall of Presidents. <laughs> like, it just moves very stiffly and... Yeah. So it wasn't the, the most believable. Soon after they get captured. And then you have these lizard guards, which... Some fun stop motion. And then they're put in this arena, and their different people are put against a Yeti who's being controlled by these lizards. They shoot this thing at the Yeti's head, this laser thing, 
which makes the Yeti go crazy and try to attack whoever's in this arena. And you see a bunch of these lizard people in the stadium. I'm like, okay, well, this is cool. I like the... What's going on here? I like the... The stop-motion animation of these creatures, especially the lizard folks. I think it looks really cool. Some may say it looks a bit too crisp or... I don't know. I'm, that's true, but... I, I like the artistry. I like the technique. This is kind of the bread and butter of what people are wanting to see in this film. And we're, we're finally seeing it. But again, it's like we're so far into the film and... I don't know. It was, if it's t maybe 10 minutes and that's putting it lightly... The Yeti helps our main characters because it doesn't like being controlled. Wannabe both fence and destroys his lasers or will stop shooting the Yeti. Our other characters don't really do a whole lot to fight the creatures. Definitely no Ray Harryhausen you know, type of Jason the Argonauts fights with these creatures. There's a bit where one gets stabbed in the back because the guide helps want Rondo Montana want to be Bo Svensson. But like our lead guy, Matthew, doesn't do much of Jack squat. <laughs> Except like one thing at the end, to be fair. So they leave the arena. I felt bad for the Yeti who did all this stuff to save them and then none of them tried to save the Yeti. Instead, these lizards just stabbed the hell out of it and killed it, so felt bad for it. Because that Yeti was like the best character in the movie. And the professor just staying there watching, which made me laugh when she just. All of a sudden, like an arrow goes into her side. Like, oh! I'm like, yeah, you stood there with her. Oh, yeah, by the way, there's bad guys trying to kill you. They have crossbows. Should have thought of that. For a professor, it's pretty damn stupid. Our characters run. The, the lead guy sees that there's a dam. There's a laser, shoots the laser, blows up the dam. Causes a bit of flooding. I guess takes care of all the other lizard people, I guess. You don't really see a lot of their demise. They walk off for a bit. The professor dies, but let me record this stuff to prove that, hey, what this guy tells you is the truth. Our characters walk away, leave, the movie's over. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much the movie. So you're like, okay. I guess that was it. Like there's nothing else to it. You're like, all right. That was a thing. Now what? That's kind of reaction. Like, well, okay. Gotcha. And that's what I mean. Like, as I'm watching the film, I'm sitting there going, okay. That's it, I guess. So, I, I know you're not supposed to expect much because it's a full moon film. Despite the good intentions and the good vibrations. I can appreciate the idea. I mean, there's some fun stop motion. You could probably see both of them in the trailer. But like I said, the story, the script... The other types of production value, the acting, pretty bottom level full moon stuff. I mean, if you did get past all that and you just want to see good intentions and some pretty decent stop motion effects in the third act. You know, I'm glad I saw this once as a curiosity piece, but like I said... I just would have preferred a documentary on David Allen's goal and just show the have the stop motion as just separate scenes, not as a full film. 
Because I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. David Allen, if some of you are watching this, didn't seem like it was worth it. I'm not trying to be mean or rude, just didn't seem like it was worth it at the end of the day. See, I mean, I get it, dreams to be fulfilled may not have the biggest budget, but it just... It, honestly, I kind of wish he just had put his time in other stuff and not have wasted so much of his life on, on, on this. I know this sounds rude, but it's just... I'm not meaning to be. It's just like, man... But hey, man, sometimes it's the dream that gets you going through life and there's all this potential you have, all these ideas you have, and Sally, sometimes it just doesn't work out, and that's why it's more of a tragedy than anything. Like I said, David Allen Damon get to finish it, although, again, his live action stuff really wasn't that good, so... If this film had come out in 1995, 1996, you may have a couple people liked in it for the stop motion and like like to the tip beat. Like some maybe like some of those other full moon films. You know, there's some that like it. Be lucky if it gets a cult following, you know, that type of thing. I'm trying to think like, but yeah, having a, if you can't have better characters that maybe have a more personable or personality filled cast would have helped. I don't know. With that said, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.